One of the most horrifying feelings is this feeling of being wired but tired. If you've ever had the feeling of having a really long stressful work day and you're so worked up but you're so exhausted that unfortunately when your head hits the pillow you can't fall asleep. Now this is what sometimes people call adrenal fatigue is. Now adrenal fatigue by itself is not really a true medical diagnosis but the symptoms itself are real. Now in this video I want to describe and tell, share a bit about my own journey and story of severe adrenal fatigue or burnout. I want to share some botanicals we typically use in traditional Chinese medicine, as well as what's very, very important, the three stages of adrenal fatigue or adrenal burnout. So I hope this will be a very useful sequential approach, and don't forget to check out the companion guide that goes along with it. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hine, board licensed acupuncturist and doctor of traditional Chinese medicine and author of the health book, Master the Day. So let's get to number one. But first and foremost, what is the concept of adrenal fatigue? Right, if you think of it as just stress in a nutshell, you can think of the kind of damage to your health that happens when anyone is exposed to prolonged, unremitting stress. You can read books written by evolutionary biologists and they'll describe how our nervous system and how our physiology is wired. You know, you have the acute stress hormones like adrenaline and you have cortisol also, but you have really, there's an axis called the HPA axis. And you can Google it if you wanna learn more, I'll share more on this later. But the HPA axis is also one of those physiological pathways in the body that deals with chronic stressors. In ancient times, people would have to deal with primarily the acute stress of, let's say, the threat in the jungle, a lion, a snake, something where there's an acute, I almost just died, we fight, and then an hour later I'm good. But of course they could have the chronic stress of malnutrition, disease, of getting recurring fevers or illnesses. But today we have a very unusual kind of stress. And the stress that is on one hand real stress, but there's also the stress that is just subjective perceived stress. Right, I can feel like I'm not as successful as I want to be, and I can push my nervous system, my physiology, to be driven until the end of time into adrenal burnout, purely imagined that it all exists in this guy's head. So the stressors can be real or not real, but the effect on physiology is the same. Now this is actually how I got myself into severe adrenal burnout about seven years ago. So I was entering the first year of my doctoral program in traditional Chinese medicine. I was taking 32 credit hours a week because I was doing an accelerated four-year doctorate. And to my knowledge, I was the only person working 20 hours a week. I was doing that, yes, because I'm driven and yes, because I wanna get ahead, but also I was doing it to not die with crippling debt because from our medical programs, they're four years, I did a doctorate. It was the same cost as becoming an MD, right? A quarter million dollar program. I did not wanna have debt that said $260,000 minus next to my name. So. I worked 20 hours a week and I put myself through a suicide bordering pace, right? Just a total breakneck pace that was inhuman and I never should have done. I went through each of these stages that we're going to talk about here. And what's very fascinating is for me, looking back at those initial stages where, wow, I'm suddenly experiencing anxiety and panic attacks for the first time in my life. Wow, I'm suddenly having insomnia every day for the first time in my life. Now there was an early researcher named Hans Selye who was one of the initial researchers who studied the stress response physiologically on an organism. Now he called this general adaptation syndrome. And he talks about these three particular stages that we're going to talk about here today. The first is alarm, the second is resistance, and the third is exhaustion. Now besides alarm, resistance, and exhaustion, there's also this entire phenomenon called neurasthenia. And there's a great book called Neurasthenia Nation that describes the early history of nervous exhaustion as they used to call it, which is the same as adrenal fatigue. And they describe the early history of it in America because America, they used to call it American-itis. I think it was William James, the UK psychologist who said that. This American-itis was mostly diagnosed and observed in two groups. One was the first cohort of men that were suddenly putting on suits, going to work and working high stress jobs in cities. Right, they were sitting all day, they weren't working in the field, they were blue collar workers, and they were developing symptoms of neurasthenia. Indigestion, headaches, anxiety, depression, insomnia, right, panic attacks. And then the second group actually was women who were stay at home wives and stay at home mothers who had no purpose and no meaning, spent prolonged periods of time alone at home with no company and developed similarly neurasthenic symptoms. Now let's jump into number one and I've put together actually these three things into a really beautiful PDF handout you can download for free. The link right below this video will have stage one, stage two, stage three, the exact hormones we target, as well as the botanicals from traditional Chinese medicine and even Western herbalism like uh, naturopathic doctors would recommend. So we took the time to put together this beautiful handout for you. Please download it, take it for whatever you want. Now let's talk about stage one, the alarm phase. Stage one is the person who's let's say working 60, 70 hours a week, medical student, startup CEO, a New Yorker or a LA person in a busy, stressful career. It could even be 40 hours a week, but the stress is high enough 
that now you're causing physiological dysregulation. Now in the alarm phase, you're typically seeing people saying things like, I'm having a lot of anxiety, I'm always feeling on edge. I feel very tired at night, but so wired that I can't fall asleep for hours. And then I'm still waking up at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. So they're often experiencing heightened nervous system activity. So a state of what we call sympathetic dominance, meaning that your body is spending a higher percentage of the day in fight or flight than it is in rest and digest, the parasympathetic. Now you can do this for a while. Anyone can do this for a couple years until the straw that breaks the camel's back. Now in this stage, Mostly people come in with heightened anxiety symptoms, physical tension, TMJ, tight chest, suboccipital tension, sometimes headaches that are tension headaches, indigestion, the GI begins shutting off because of the stress hormones. And in general, you see mobilization of the body's stress resources, right? We'll call them the stress hormones. Now, another final symptom is that you may start to see issues like heart palpitations, highly elevated heart rate, even when you're at rest or sometimes hours after working. But oddly enough, sometimes people here are still either sleeping well, or they're beginning to have consistent insomnia, but because they have enough reserves, they may sleep five, six hours a night for a while, and they're not having any other side effects going forward. And in this case, what we're seeing in the traditional Chinese medicine point of view, the two dominant organs I see being affected, the heart, which remember the heart, yes, is the anatomical heart, but is also the mirror of the nervous system, which is why symptoms like anxiety, panic attacks, and really a lot of general nervous system dysregulation falls into the category of the heart organ in TCM. The second is the spleen pancreas, because you commonly begin to see people getting indigestion, acid reflux, gastroparesis, so food is sitting in their stomach forever, and that kind of thing. When we talk about herbal therapies here that we utilize, it's primarily the class of nervine herbs. Back in the day, this whole thing of neurasthenia or nervous exhaustion was a huge business, and frankly, it's bigger than ever before. Now they just give you antidepressants or anti-anxiety medication. But some of these herbs from a Western herbalism as well as a traditional Chinese medicine category include, they include things like poppy, hops, valerian, and passion flower, which are really like the traditional nervines. If you go to like a functional doc or a naturopathic doctor, or you look at a lot of the sleep blends online, they fall into this first category of alarm. So they are traditional sedatives, right? They help you get the nervous system back into the parasympathetic. And in traditional Chinese medicine, we're typically using more herbs like cinnamon twig and cinnamon bark. We also use things like fuling, poria. Secondarily, we use herbs like longu and muli. Muli is oyster shell. Longu is translated as dragon bone, but we typically use minerals when we say we need to settle or calm the spirit. Now let's go to phase two, the resistance stage. Now in the resistance stage, we're seeing where people are beginning to have much more significant dysregulation. This is where people can't sleep no matter what they do. When these bouts flare up, People will tell me for like three weeks to two months, I get insomnia and I'm waking in the night for hours. Or like me, you can get so severe that you're waking up all night long with heart palpitations, elevated heart rate. It's like your body is in panic mode and you don't even get to choose anymore. And this is the stage where they have to cut back immediately on all of their energy expenditure to not go into phase three or stage three exhaustion. In this stage, the digestive system gets worse. Some people have absolutely zero appetite. I myself lost 15 pounds and that's because hunger hormones get out of whack as your cortisol and your adrenal stress hormones go up. This also changes the neurotransmitter status, right? Obviously anxiety and then later depression can show up in this period. Women may start to see things like their cycle changing or their cycle going away altogether or missing a month. Things get weird. Now in this stage on the biochemical or the physiological side, we see elevated cortisol, and then we see circadian rhythm dysregulation. This is where people start getting severe insomnia. They can't fall asleep, they can't stay asleep. I can only sleep three hours per day for a period of months. Now this stage is what we call in traditional Chinese medicine, the heart and the liver being most affected. So the heart we talked about, but now when we say the liver, the liver is another organ that deals with stress. So this is where people develop symptoms like acid reflux. I see people who eat, frankly, a healthy diet, but they have such high stress that they can't eat anything without getting indigested. How are they doing that with a healthy diet? The stress hormones. Now, in this resistance phase, a lot of the herbs and treatments we use focus typically more on this kind of anxiety aspect to it. So herbs like magnolia, vervain in Western herbalism, renchen, ginseng varieties. We also have guajir, fuling, and finally, longu and muli again. Now anxiety and adrenal fatigue or this kind of burnout is something I really specialize in my practice and in my clinic. And I work with a limited number of new patients every single month in my clinic in Los Angeles or virtually via telemedicine. So if that's something you guys wanna explore, you can always reach out to my clinic. There's info in the bio of this video here below, or you can just go to dralexheim.com forward slash clinic. And let's get into stage number three, 
which is exhaustion. Now in the exhaustion stage, this typically people have not slept well for years at this point. They can't sleep even if they want to. And when they sleep, they'll either say, I sleep 10, 11, 12 hours and I don't feel rested or I still can't sleep at all. But now there are no more resources to fight, right? Your body has used up the juice, the battery charge. And so people begin to experience depression, chronic fatigue syndrome like symptoms, hypothyroid like symptoms, or sometimes hypothyroid Hashimoto's or hypothyroidism itself. So what we see here typically are low cortisol and DHEA. Now in Chinese medicine, we call this heart and kidney yang deficiency. So in terms of the herbs we use here for low cortisol and DHEA, we're using what we call a traditional tonic approach. You wouldn't want to use tonic herbs in the beginning. You want to use tonifying herbs only when there's what we call deficiency, right? When there's exhaustion. You know, there's this famous line in tons of traditional medical books and traditional Chinese medicine that say, after prolonged deficiency or illness, utilize this formula. Well, ancient people saw that sometimes people got wiped out by a virus or getting sick like COVID and they never recovered for years. If you're young, you often can, but if you're old, sometimes you never do. That's where you need to treat it medically. That's what I've got for you today, guys. Don't forget, download the free guide I've put together. We tried to make this into a beautiful little one page PDF that you can keep for your own self. We're also going to be launching a new online workshop on an adrenal reset, the traditional Chinese medicine point of view. So you want to be on that email list that's associated with that free guide if that's appealing to you. I've also launched this brand new healing library, which is full of these online programs on healing with traditional Chinese medicine. For those of you that can't see me, and I figure to keep this channel sponsor free to, you know, promoting a bunch of supplements or products that probably aren't going to help you anyway. And I don't believe in why not just launch online programs that can help. So the first one introduction to healing with traditional Chinese medicine, I've linked up below, pinned it in a comment. You can check it out if that resonates and connects. Besides that, there's another related video on this kind of adrenal burnout syndrome right here.